book is bull okay he's just naturally smarter than me i think you can see that i'm no smarter than anybody else in this room i just use certain little basic tools to be successful every day take the word no out of your vocabulary worry about your customer no spare customers use the 95 5 rule separate yourself from everybody else be the bull at whatever you do and on and on and on Well, you just got to keep punching and just take care of your business and you just realize until they come and shut you down or lock the doors or you can't get product or whatever until you can't make a payroll. You'd be surprised what you can take though. And and you just keep punching and punching and believe it or not times, you know, get good and it goes back to what I once again preach when times are really bad, we forget they're ever going to be good again. And when times are really good, we forget they're going to be bad again. I don't fear anything but I worry about everything. And the day you stop worrying in good times, the paddle will get you behind. And 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 so as great as things are in life, I I know you're only a, a few steps or a few incidents away from something bad happening. You can never forget it. I'm taking the next steps right now to get to the next level. Cuz always that's my sport. I must go play pick up basketball. Let's go to the office and play business. And that's what I do every day. I go to the office and play business. You got to know what you know and what you don't know. And and I knew that I understood business. You know, I think you know if you know business or not. And people ask me, should I go get my MBA? And you know what I usually tell them? You know if you need to go get your MBA. If you don't have it inside of you and you understand economics and finance and 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 operations and business then you need to go get it i knew that i didn't need it it was just a god given gift you've got to know your god given gifts and everybody has it everybody in this room has it right here so do what you know was your god given gift and find a way to use that as your path you know you know if people know what they're doing and and uh but it's my job to make sure and bring everybody up to another level and i think that's probably one of the greatest compliments i've ever gotten is that i'll take somebody good and make them better is that is that a conscious process for you like what are you doing is it just kicking people in the ass inspiring them all the by above. example all the above i, I think i do. you always know where you stand with me uh i have all my top VPs probably have been with me an average of 25 years. My two assistants uh have been with me 27 and 26 years. Uh and everybody will tell you that is the hardest son to the world to work for, but I would never work for anybody else. What would you have to see in them to think it's worth the risk? I think one of the best things that I ever did was I will I will look, look at somebody's resume and I can say, "You know what? You've never been with the right company and that's why you haven't excelled and 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 you are that's why you're in here today. And so many people choose the wrong company to go to work for. And I look at people all the time and I look at your resume and say, "Why did you go to work for this company? I know they were screwed up when you went to work for them." Okay? And so some people just are not good at choosing the right company and also the person interviewing makes promises that never happen. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is choosing the wrong company to go to work for. Do they really have good liquidity? Are they going to be in business? Are they an acquisition target where all of a sudden that they are and you're going to get bought and probably laid off? Uh you know, everything is is uh do, are they in, do they have a product that is going to be around for a long time? So everything from liquidity to product, acquisition target, growth of where are you going to go uh, everybody should always ask themselves if they want to grow and they just don't want to just whatever is is say where can I be in 5 years if i can't be at this position in 5 years then this isn't a good career path for me what made you good at selling that is a very particular skill even today it's it's all about somebody said why are you so successful because I sell. And even when you go out and you raise billions of dollars in debt and you're meeting with debt holders, you're still selling yourself. That's what it's all about. You're not just selling the deal. When I was public for 18 years, okay, and you're selling equity, uh I did five follow-on offerings, the most a restaurant company ever did when I was 
public and uh, and and you are selling yourself and 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 you know you know your numbers you know your business and you make yourself that you know more than everybody else even if you don't <laughs> let's do it another way let's go back to 10 years old i walked around with my my business my briefcase uh full of business there was no business in it but i wanted to be a business guy but you really didn't know what it was by junior high i was buying candy and reselling it at school by high school i was already trading on the stock market that's just hey doing whatever it took to make money i always wanted to make money i always had money even when i was a kid cuz i always worked whatever job i could find whether it was uh uh mo in somebody's yard or washing cars or selling lemonade uh, to the construction workers uh it was just always about making money so at 21 I sold bought him as I start building homes building shopping centers uh by the time I was 26 I built my first hotel by the time I was 25 I told myself I'll have my first jet at 35 and I did um you tend to know more about any deal anything going on in your company than anybody else i want to know how how do you master it to that level well i mean i i can't get into some details that people know that i don't know but but if you walk into my office for a meeting i don't care what department you're in i will pick apart whatever you have and and you better know your numbers when you walk in there with a spreadsheet or you better you have your ads right if you're the marketing person walking in but you also you 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 know you know what people know what they're doing and and uh but it's my job to make sure and bring everybody up to another level and i think that's probably one of the greatest compliments i've ever gotten is that i'll take somebody good and make them better know your numbers no matter what business you're looking at always know your numbers N number 2 realize that we're not successful if that consumer does not come to us whether they're eating in your restaurants where they're playing in your casino and 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 whether if you don't have a good product on that basketball court the fans are not going to come and buy those tickets the sponsors aren't going to come and therefore you're not going to have the money to pay for those good players next year you're not going to go to pay Russell Westbrook and James Harden each 40 million dollars a year you got to always remember we're only as good as us taking care of that consumer One of the things I teach everybody and especially my kids don't assume anything. I people think if somebody walks in and gives you an answer that it's the right answer. And 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 even when I tell somebody to do something, I don't assume they went and did it. All I ask them a week later, did you do that that I asked you to do because that was really important to me. Oh my gosh, I didn't do that. And I think that's the biggest mistake people make. Is don't assume that everything's running right, don't assume anything. You can go to work every day and separate yourself from anybody else. And it's no different than than the sound guy on this set. If you pick up, you know what? This sound guy is really really good. And he's worried about this and he's worried about that. Then all of a sudden you tell somebody, "You need a good sound guy this." And then they end up on this person because of a recommendation. And all of a sudden, this guy is known as the best sound guy in LA because he's paying attention or she's paying attention to details that the other sound people don't. No, you know what I, I I hear an ambulance out there. Let's cut it. You know, just a little 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 bitty things. And I just think that it's easy to separate yourself from anybody else no matter what your position is. If if you go to work for a company and you don't go up the corporate ladder, it's your fault. It's nobody else's. should they first pay you to give up on your dreams and when were you going to stop and come back and do what makes you happy you know why kids love athletes kids love athletes 
because they follow their dreams. I see guys who work at the same company for their entire lives. They clock in, they clock out, and they never have a moment of happiness. You have an opportunity. This is a rebirth. Life has a way of pushing our dreams down. They can become buried under discouragement, buried under past mistakes. There are dreams buried under divorce, buried under low self-esteem. It's easy to settle for mediocrity, even though we have all this potential buried on the inside. All of us have things that we're believing for, something that we want to accomplish. Deep down, we know it's a part of our destiny. We can feel it so strongly. But then we hit some setbacks. We didn't get the promotion. The medical report wasn't good. Or a relationship didn't work out. Now don't let circumstances talk you out of it. You may not understand why a business didn't make it. Why a person walked away. Why you came down with an illness. You were doing the right thing, but the wrong thing happened. It's all a part of the process. Your dream may be buried. The good news is it's still alive. It's not too late to see it come to pass. If you'll do your part and start believing again, get your passion back, it is on the way. Go back and try again. The true mark of a champion is even though some dirt gets thrown on your dream, instead of letting it get buried, you keep shaking it off. You keep moving forward. You keep looking for new opportunities. If you're going to reach your highest potential, you have to make up your mind that you are in it for the long haul. You're not going to let people talk you out of it. Circumstances discourage you. Delays cause you to give up. Critical people cause you to get distracted. You're going to stay focused on your goal. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is calling out to you. Dream big. And make those big things happen. I'm a dreamer. I will never stop being a dreamer. If you're going to be successful in creating the life of your dreams, you have to believe that you are capable of making it happen. You have to believe that you have the right stuff and that you're able to pull it off. Now, whether you call it self-esteem, self-confidence, or self-assurance, it's a deep-seated belief that you have what it takes. The abilities, the inner resources, the talents, and the skills to create your desired results. Now, believing in yourself is simply an attitude. Believing in yourself is a choice. You have to choose to believe that you can do anything you set your mind to. Anything at all. Because, in fact, you can. What does that mean to you, this victory? It means everything. It means everything. It means you were right. It means they were right. It means that the people that didn't believe, they were wrong. It means that when you don't believe, you do yourself a disservice because it is wrong. So you got to believe. You got to believe in what you want to do. You got to believe in what you want to get accomplished and believe that somehow, somewhere within yourself and in the universe around you, there are tools and resources that will be of aid and help the man that really wants to get it done. Life is death without change. Are you willing to make a change in your life to realize the dream, to fulfill what's in your mind, what you can visualize as your life. And are you willing to put the sweat equity, the time, the persistency that it takes, not on your timetable, but on fate's timetable? If you are, then you have to educate yourself in whatever that subject matter is.
As T. Lawrence said, all men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. That, at the end of the day, is the very mission of my life, to get people to understand that there is a difference between dreaming and executing, about doing something based on the things that you want to see happen in the world. But most people hit that moment of action and they stop. But they don't stop knowingly. They stop for a thousand different reasons that they're never able to put their finger on. They stop because they're tired. They stop because circumstance dictates. They stop because they don't have enough money. They stop because they're too young. They stop because they're too old. They stop for a whole host of reasons that at the end of the day are total bullshit. The thing that stops them is fear. The thing that stops them is a belief that they don't even know they have that says that they're never going to accomplish. They stop because they can't muster the belief in themselves to move forward, to believe that their actions will have the consequences that they want, to believe that they can learn the things that they don't already understand, to believe in themselves that their actions will generate a reward. And that reward is very simple that you can close your eyes and imagine the world that you want to create and open them and create it. And some people are stopped by something even more dangerous. They dream too small. And as David Ogilvy said, don't bunt. Aim out of the ballpark. Aim for the company of the mortals. No one can do that. When you can allow yourself to dream at that level, when you can allow yourself to believe in yourself, to believe in your ability to become the kind of person that can swing for the fences, not only swing for the fences, but make contact. To be able to call your shot like Babe Ruth and knock it out of the park. When you can look at yourself and have the arrogance of belief in yourself that you are capable of that, that you are worthy of being remembered, that you are worthy of people knowing your name, then you will strike out and have a chance at greatness. But it starts with that. It starts with being willing to believe that all the people, the wall of humanity that stands behind you in the past, none of them, none of them have anything that you don't. And the only difference between the greats, the only difference between those who are remembered and those who are forgotten is the willingness to step up to the plate and call their shot. So many people ask me, is it possible to train your brain to help you make more money? And the answer is yes. So maybe I can share a story with you of how I started to train my own brain to help me make more money. And it started with setting some goals for the kind of lifestyle that I wanted to live. And my mentor, uh, Walter Schneider, many years ago, uh, it was a very, very successful businessman. And he said, in order to achieve your goals, he said, first you have to have the clarity of what they are. So let's say you have a financial goal of making, let's say $100,000 a year. Okay, that's about $8,500 a month or about you know $2,150 every week that you wanna earn. And let's say you're not earning that right now. One of the things you can do to train your brain to help you make that amount of money is first and foremost, get clear on the exact amount you want to earn, whether it's per week, per month, or per year. That's step number one. Step number two, create a simple affirmation that goes like this. I am so happy and grateful for the fact that I am now earning $10,000 a month. Simple affirmation. And what I want you to do is I want you to read that affirmation every single morning, five to 10 times, and every single night before you go to bed, five to 10 times. And as you read that affirmation, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to practice, mentally rehearse 
you receiving that money in the form of a check or cash or in your bank account and see the money going into your bank account. I want you to feel what it feels like to consistently have $10,000 a month coming into your bank account. And you can choose whatever amount you want, by the way. And as you close your eyes and you visualize that money coming into your account, what I also want you to visualize is the impact that that amount of money will have on your life, your family's life, your friend's life, the community that you live in, and the charities that you want to support. Get totally into a mental movie and the emotions as if you were a Hollywood actor or actress pretending that that was really happening. So you'd read your affirmation, I'm so happy and grateful for the fact that I am now earning $10,000 a month. And as you do that and you repeat that, mentally rehearse, visualize what that looks like. And what that does is that primes your brain to see and feel as if it is real right now. And that activates the different parts of your brain, specifically the left prefrontal cortex, which is the genius CEO Einstein part of your brain that can actually help you figure out how to achieve that goal and dream.